Good morning, Faith Church. I am so happy you're here this morning. And I am honored to be with you to do this. So welcome and let's all just calm our hearts and get ready for our service this morning. Our mission is to express God's love to all, invite others to know Jesus, and make faithful disciples. Let's enter into God's gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. And we will have our first hymn by Hazel. Mm -hmm. so excited to have our faith kids here and the video is always such a great learning tool and we enjoy your kids you're just so wonderful if you started back to school we're praying for you so let's do our video of the week when you're a kid there's lots of stuff they won't let you do. You can't drive the school bus or work at the zoo. You can't blast off into space or get a tattoo. You're too small, that's what they say. So they won't talk with you. No loopy roller coaster rides or staying up all night. No demolition derbies or riding glider kites. No bull rides at the rodeo or jumping out of planes or climbing up high ladders to install new weather vanes. No leaping off the high dive, no scary movies too. When you're a kid, there's so much stuff they won't let you do. But there's one thing that you can do that you can do today. There's someone waiting for you and you're never in his way. So come hang out with Jesus. He knows you're big enough to be his friend forever. And that's important stuff. Have a great week, kids. It's just wonderful to have you here. Let's prepare our hearts for the sermon. Oh, we will have song and prayer and scripture and the word for God for us today. Of 
Our prayers. You hear the cries of your people for justice and mercy. You answer our prayers with the gift of your Son, who bears our burdens and sets us free. Speak your truth to us. 
Purge and refine us that we may love and serve you alone. We bring you today the joys and concerns of our hearts. We give you thanks for all the gifts you have given us. We pray for those who are in need of healing and wholeness. And we lift up one another as we go through this season of uncertainty in our lives. God, we know deep within our hearts that by the power of your loving presence, you are able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. God of life, by the power of your spirit, come to us now. Plow our hearts with your living word until we are broken. Become fertile with your love, for we long to bear fruit in a world that is wasting. We pray in the name of Jesus, whose charge we bear. Amen. The name of this sermon is All About the Kids. We're reading from Mark 10, 13 through 16. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, and he placed his hands on them, and he blessed them. Now, let's take a minute and watch my favorite commercial. Let's talk about Haribo Gold Bears. Aloha. I can't stop eating this orange one. The red one is more good to me because it tastes like berries. It has this juicy flavor to it. They're really squishy. My bears are like doing cartwheels and backflips and stuff. And then I'm going to fly it into my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's what I call little kid mentality. When was the last time you felt like a kid? Close your eyes and think about that for one moment. Don't go to sleep. I know it's early for some of us. Just ready, close your eyes and just imagine. Do you feel the excitement, the wonder of another day? Do you remember the birthdays when you just couldn't wait for another year to be another year older? And then you counted the half birthdays? I'm five and a half, ask any kid. I don't ever remember saying I'm 72 and a half. <laughs> Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. The joy of the Lord. How many of us still have the joy of the Lord in our everyday life? This new life that is unchartered territory for all of us. God has given us his sense of humor, joy for life, and tells us 365 times, one for each day in the Bible to fret not. Do we go to God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit to complain to say, life is not fair, and what a horrible life God has given me. Are the cares of this world dragging you down into a deep, dark place? Maybe it's time to chew on one of those gummy bears and let it fly into your mouth. Are you looking through the world with rose-colored glasses? I consider my glasses a blessing. Some folks just shake their heads and roll their eyes, thinking that us rosy people are naive and not deep thinkers. Deep thinkers, theologians, all the hard questions. Sometimes needing to know the answers to the hard, unsolvable questions squeezes the little kid right out of our soul. Huh, was Jesus' robe white or gray? Some people spent hours debating that. Was Jesus born on 1st Street or 2nd Street in Jerusalem? Are Jesus's eyes light brown or dark brown or brown at all? 
Then we go, why do these things have to happen to me? It's hard. Why does God allow people I love to get sick and die? Why is there sickness, war, and poverty? All those questions. Jesus is talking in Revelation. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come and eat with that person and they with me. Jesus does stand at the door of our hearts and knocks at every moment, every day. Think about this. Do you jump up like a little kid all excited to see if it's one of your friends asking you to play? Oh, excuse me. Not play. Hang out. They hang out now. Or do you get grumpy and yell, who is it? In that don't bother me voice, Jesus answers, it's me. Go away, I'm busy. Busy being grown up. Busy letting the cares of this world drag me down. Busy not trusting that God's got it. Trust like a child. Our Christianity is a heart thing, not a head thing. The ears of our heart whisper, yes, Jesus is alive in me. When I came to be a Christian, the Holy Spirit came to dwell in me. When Jesus said, I must go away, he was talking about the Holy Spirit. All I have spoken while still here with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. Have you lost your little child within? Have your rosy-colored glasses turned dull? Or maybe you never owned a pair of those glasses. I know life has deep, hard problems, discouragements, and heartbreaks. I also know God's got it. So when you think there is no escape, the sorrow is too deep, the black hole you're drowning in has no bottom, our Trinity, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are here with us you with all of us they're longing to have you answer the knock on the door and rescue your heart to give you faith of a little child and have the joy of the lord in your very soul it's not a naive everything is wonderful giddy joy it's a foundation that knows on solid rock i stand all other ground is sinking sand Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. I hope you're thinking, where can I buy some of those rose-colored glasses? The dollar store? Macy's? Or maybe even Tiffany's? The glasses are right here in your heart. They, They came when the Holy Spirit When you became a Christ follower, they are like Dorothy's ruby red slippers. You have them on all the time and don't know it. Remember, there's no place like home. Heaven is our eternal home. Keep your eyes upon God. Psalm 34, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. And Ephesians, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints, God's people, and members of God's household. We're going to look at some part A and some part B in the Bible. I love this because so many people go to part A and forget part B. This is when it really opened my eyes to read two parts. Philippians, therefore, my dear friends, have you as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That's how I discovered part B. I was not crazy about part A. Part B said, for it is God who works in you to will and act in order to fulfill his great purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing. The first time I read part A, I did fear and tremble. 
Then I kept reading, part B. So we have to really get into God's word. I don't want to get to heaven and say to God, it was a good book you wrote, but I never got to read it. So we go to Jeremiah. God says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. You're probably very familiar with that. That's great news. My sunny rosy glasses are working. How about part B? Wait. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Seek God with all my heart. It's an amazing thing. And some people say, I don't have time for that. I'm busy. <laughs> Make time for God. Psalm 46.10 be still and know that I am God. Be still. How do I do that? Remember the Staples talking easy button that declares that was easy? Sad news. For some folks, being still and listening is hard work. Next week, we're going to do a lot with listening prayer. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now, that's a revelation. So then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. Can you hear the whisper of the Holy Spirit? When I <clears throat> became a Christian, I didn't listen to that still, small voice. I was afraid. I was afraid God was going to tell me I wasn't good enough. I was wrong. No matter my past, I am forgiven and unconditionally loved. God accepts us right where we are. We don't have to clean up our act. We don't have to be better. Some people say, oh, when I'm better, I'll go to church. When I change my habits, no, no, no. God wants us right where we are. Start today, sit and listen, relearn to come to Jesus as a child. Take up your citizenship in all things praise God. Tell God how deep your love is. In the good times, it's so easy, but in those horrific times, it's absolutely imperative. Is life hard? Absolutely. Is there evil? Absolutely. In Peter, be sober, alert and cautious at all times. That enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. That's when we have to put on our God of ar armor of God in Ephesians. The last verses tell you all about putting on your armor. Do everything without grumbling. We must all find our own working of salvation. What works for me may never work for you. For me, it is praising God in all times, through the good and the bad. And you know, my girlfriend, who works in preschool, tries to explain to the children about colors and who we are in black and white. So she'll take a brown egg and a white egg, and all the kids are very excited, and she cracks them open. And we're the same inside. We all have the, the same horrible things that happen. There's nothing new under the sun. So we all have our storms. I love praise music. There's a, a song, I Will Praise You in the Storm, which just got me through so many things. And then there's another one, Tell My Heart to Beat Again. Whatever God is telling you to do, listen, be God's child. I leave you with God's biblical answer to coming to Christ as a little child. Take time to put on your rose-colored glasses, eat your gummy bears, all the while, you are praising God. So which gummy bear is your favorite? Remember, the red one is more gooder and tastes like berries. Oh, 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 oh,
As we leave this shared virtual space today, let us make a commitment to stay connected to one another. Let us dedicate our offerings for the mission that God has given us at Faith Church, and let us enter this new next week with God's blessings. Let us pray. Gracious God, source of our daily bread and Sabbath trust, you feed us with your love and equip us to share in your promise. Receive the offerings of our wounded spirits, our guarded purses, our meager strength, and continue to expand our hearts until we live with boldness and joy. Sisters and brothers, however dark the night gets, whatever you have squandered, know that you are held by a love like this. The creator who made you still claims you in covenant love. The Redeemer who died for your sake lives again by the word of God. The sustainer of all creation yet breathes courage into your heart. Go then and serve boldly, for God's desire encompasses the whole of creation. We pray in the name of the one that taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever, amen. Go into this week rejoicing, rejoicing that we have a God that loves us and we are blessed. Have a wonderful week, and thank you very much. Amen.